Dan, what do you think your chances of winning are? Excellent. Excellent. What makes, what makes you say that? My campaign manager tapped me on the shoulder and said, uh, it's time for be the warrior I created you to be. My campaign manager being the Lord upstairs. I, I have been uh, asking myself, if not me, then who? And if not how, if not now, then when? I truly feel called uh, for what I was meant to be. And that is a warrior in a time of good versus evil. And this is what we're finding ourselves in right now. If I always wanted to serve this country, that's why I went in the Marine Corps. Um, but I also knew that I wanted to serve others because that's where I gained my energy. I'm the, I'm the guy that when you're stuck on the side of the road, some random stranger pulls over and helps you out. That's me because I gained my energy by doing that. I just love helping people. I love this country. And to serve it would be the greatest honor I'd have and would be able to do again. And right now I see there's been a lot of things that we can talk about today. And I know you and I have talked about it in the past, but there's been a lot of things going on in our country that you and I swore an oath. I swore 25 years ago or so, or whatever it was. Uh, you swore, you know, a while ago too. And, but it doesn't mean any less today than it did then against enemies, both foreign, both foreign and domestic. And right now our country is slipping away those freedoms, those constitutional freedoms and, and laws and, and liberties that we have to pursue our own happiness have been taken every day and it's been compounded and multiplied and it is a runaway train right now. And we saw it with the beginning of the um, pandemic. We've seen it with the mandates that came upon us all. We've seen it with uh, what they've done to our children in schools. Now that's been going on for decades, but what we really, again, it's been exacerbated and, and brought to our attention when we see what the kids are bringing home from school because they're at school, you know, at doing homeschool or whatever, or online learning or indoctrination, if you will. So all of these things, um, and you can talk about any policy you want right now. Um, we can blame Putin for our inflation, but inflation started the minute that we cut off our pipelines. It basically started day one of the current administration we have right now, or regime, if you want. So all of these things put together in one, and one of the ugliest baskets I've ever seen caused me to just stand up and it was either hiss and moan about it at home and do nothing about it, which is not my character or my heart, or step up and serve and, and try to save this country for you, me, my, our neighbors and, our, and my kids and your kids. And That's and really the key right there, you know, is getting enough people to step up, Dan. So you're pretty much like the quintessential average Joe. Right. That's it. Yeah. Me too. Right. That's us too. Um, you're out there, uh, you know, would you call it suburban or, or more rural? See where you're at. We call that rural. We would call it suburban, right? I'd call it. I'm probably rural. <laughs> rural, yeah. rural. But yeah. you're on the edge out there. It's not like you're a million miles from nowhere. Oh, no, no. I mean, how, how far from Philly? Uh, an hour. That's okay. It. Yeah. An hour. Closer than Allentown. Uh, Allentown's an hour. Harrisburg's an hour. All right. So you're out there, you've got your family, right? And everything's yep. going good. And, but you see what's going on in the country. And like a lot of us, you're getting a little upset. Would that be a fair way to say that? That's a, to put it lightly. I'm a lot lightly. upset, but yeah, I'm a lot upset. I talked I think, about uh, something on the, on the podcast, going back to, uh, the election. When I saw what the Democrat, and I didn't fully understand what was going on, to be fair, because, you know, none of the information was forthcoming. There was no transparency. But I saw what was going on. I saw how the election was being stolen as it was happening. I saw what was happening to President Trump. And I said, there's a great moral dilemma right now for veterans. That's how I felt. Because, and I think this is what you were saying. I said, how do I reconcile this? That I've taken an oath that didn't expire. I mean, that oath is the, for the same reasons that you mentioned that I host the podcast, right? And I have this oath, just like you, we're in the same in that regard and many of us, right? Mm -hmm. And now I clearly see that that constitution is under attack, right? 
and I'm supposed to sit back and, and do what? Nothing? It, it's not for you me. Recall you brought up, yeah, you brought up the Obama administration. Or recall back under the Obama administration, right wing veteran conservatives were labeled as domestic terrorists. Those are the ones that are one of the biggest threats to our country. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? And that, you know, and maybe we'll touch on that House bill that you were talking about earlier. Um, everything, the folks that are truly standing up for what this country means and stood for through, for decades since its inception, since the great experiment, the, the, the creation of this country and ultimately liberty and, and, and freedom is being taken every day. And we swore an oath to defend that as did all of our current politicians and everything. And we see it slipping away. And I think the driving force in this thing is when I saw the election, then January 6th, you know, regardless of your stance on January 6th, you and I both know what choke points are. We both know what one of the most secure buildings in the world <laughs> is. Okay, we also very know issue that, up. I'm like, if it's that easy to attack the Capitol with a bunch on. of iPhones, you know, yeah. like who's well, believing this? this? It's a 29,000 pound door. Let's it's, it's 26 or 29,000 pounds. So the fact checkers, it's either 26,000 or 29,000. Okay, it's a big bronze door, it's a Columbus door. There ain't nothing opening that thing, especially if you pile a million people against that thing, it's not going to open up. Okay, unless you open it from the inside. It's called the choke point for a reason. So you, you know, I could be sitting there as one lonely Marine and I could guard that door and nobody's coming in. Okay. But when you have a double secure, anyway, I digress. So I see what happens on January 6th. I see what they're doing to these people. I see that there's no due process. And we wonder why right. some of these acts that we have in our country's history, like the Patriot Act, sounds so great. sounds so fluffy and, and colorful, but it's probably the worst thing we've ever done to our country. And so now we have, without due process, domestic terrorists held without, without bail, without trial, without anything. Still, how is that even possible? So then I see my current state senator at that time roll over, Pat Toomey, decide to retire or whatever he's going to do, but he's still playing school squishmeister he's not doing anything yep. and i'm getting fired up and then uh our current administration starts putting policies and these executive orders and then our borders start getting overrun and the wall stops and all this stuff in our country starts getting invaded and then august comes and i have never had so much emotional roller coaster as I did when I saw what we were doing with Afghanistan and then when we pulled out and you and I both were in the Marine Corps you've probably been on a canteen search party just as well as I have somebody lost a piece of equipment in the woods we leave it better than it was when we got here boys go find it yep. and now we're leaving 85 billion dollars worth of equipment to our enemy we left biometric data and those that we called allies there, we allowed them to get slaughtered by the day with biometric data that we left for our enemy. China is inventorying our stuff. We want to move to all these batteries and most of the lithium in the world comes from Afghanistan. So China's putting in the infrastructure in Afghanistan, but nobody's talking about that. So we're going to keep doing that. Members of Congress are buying you know, stocks and all these companies that make these batteries, forcing us all to get electric cars, driving gas prices up. Meanwhile, we're shutting our own pipelines down here. Our borders are still being overrun. Our country is being overrun. We're turning good into evil and we're making evil sound good. We have kids that are lost. They have no sense of control of their own lives. So they're identifying as something you can't even recognize anymore. We got Kids trying to say that they're cats in school and want litter boxes to go poop in the bathroom on the floor. And people joke about this stuff, but it's all happening and it's true. The world has turned upside down. Our country is turning 
upon itself. Russia and Ukraine is being pushed to the ultimate limits with they're ultimately, in my opinion, Russia is doing everything to avoid World War III. I mean, they're instigating fights with Ukraine, but we have we have our country that seems like they're just keep poking the bear, poking the bear. I mean, we, you know, yesterday I saw on CNBC, I don't look at it, but it popped up on my computer, so I was forced to look at it. But I saw that due to U.S. intel, we gave intel to Ukraine that gave them a, a flight path of a, a Russian transport plane that they shot down with 100, 100 Russian troops on it. And we're patting ourselves, we're giving ourselves the old POB. Good job. Pat on the back. Great job. We shot down a Russian airplane with a, a hundred souls on it. If you, if that happened to one of our transport aircraft. Right. That, that's enough to start aircraft, World War III right there. With our men and women on it, it'd be lights out. How much and we're strength? patting ourselves on the back right now. And we're ignoring the fact that there is literally a Nazi unit in the Ukrainian military, which Putin said in the beginning. We're blaming Russia for these war atrocities and we're just throwing it all over the media, but nobody can actually prove it. We are literally pushing buttons to try to get a fight. And Russia is not. They're fighting. Don't get me wrong. Putin's, Putin's not a good dude. So don't. I'm not taking anybody's side here, okay? But what I'm looking at is I'm looking at my 10,000 foot view and why don't we just call for a ceasefire and call for some peace talks instead of just keep throwing weapons at it? We want to take guns from American citizens and we keep pumping them into the Ukrainian citizens and we're patting ourselves on the back as they kill more and more Russians and then we don't expect one of the largest world powers militarily to not be angry with us? I, I don't understand where this reasoning and this thought process comes in. It is unbelievable to me. And did so you hear, uh, me Biden's saying this, did you hear Biden's uh, calls for peace in Ukraine? No, he never has. <laughs> Dude, I, I was listening for crickets. <laughs> yeah, I, it's amazing to me. Uh, even the Pope, the Pope finally, it was like, uh, I think, you know, Russian troops had, had gone halfway through the country before the Pope finally came out and, and started praying for peace. I talked about it on the podcast. It was, um, it was very strange to your point on that. Um, and the whole thing, Dan, uh, you know, everything that I see going on in Ukraine does not match what's being said about it. I don't know how you trust anything that's coming out of there. But for two years, I'm sorry, for two years, it was divide, 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 trust the science. It's not God. Divide everybody. If you're not wearing a mask, you want people to die. If you don't get the jab, then you you want people to die. You're not truly American. Vaccinate your kids. Don't vaccinate your kids. Whatever. We're dividing, dividing, dividing. Trust the science. Your faith means nothing because you can't use a health, a, a religious exemption, blah, 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 blah. Ukraine comes and all of a sudden it's like, we got to stand together. We got to unite. We got to pray for Ukraine. We're now making American flags with Ukrainian flags on it. Everybody, you know, pray for Ukraine. Trust in God again. I mean, God didn't matter during COVID, but now it matters because Russia's bad. And Putin is the reason why inflation is so bad. And now you're going to have food shortages because Putin is so bad. Trust God. Pray for everybody. What is going on? What is going on? And meanwhile, I'm at my kid's school in the middle school and we're finding pornography in the books. Pedophilia. We've experienced the, the same, Dan. And people think, my wife found it. Dan, it was a book that I ordered for my daughter. I, you know what the book was about? It was about uh, stories of successful women. And lo and behold, there's a chapter in there about a boy. My daughter's seven. You know, and here's the funny thing. Do you know, once in a while, she talks about being a boy. And sometimes she runs around neighing like a horse and thinks she's a horse. And believe it or not, sometimes she crawls around on the floor acting like a dog. We got to tell her to knock it off. Not, be, not because of her identity crisis, but because she's getting a little too rough. But I'm, I look at all this, I think, am I supposed to be getting her like canine conversion therapy or equine conversion therapy under this new set of rules? This is, the whole thing is bizarre to me. She's a kid. 
She's a kid. Exactly. You know, the don't, the don't say gay bill was to just so you're not shoving sexual pedophilia, wrong, evil things down kindergartners to third grade. In my opinion, they should have bumped that up to seventh grade. Damn. It should have been kindergarten through seventh grade. It should be anywhere. Don't get I me said wrong. to you the moral dilemma of veterans. How now is the moral dilemma of parents that you're up against people that are not only saying, well, we think that that's appropriate for children. That's not what's happening. They secretly tried to slip it in. It was, wasn't discussed openly with parents that, oh, hey, we're going to begin teaching your children about sex in a way that nobody in their right mind would, would agree with. They didn't do it in the open, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't a suggestion. It wasn't done through some democratic process. Then we uncover this. It's revealed. And they're fighting tooth and nail to keep it in place. And you have to seriously ask yourself about the character of the people who would behave like that. Well, yeah. let's talk about a couple things, Pennsylvania, Dan. Uh, you've been married 22 years, is that right? Yes, sir. Three kids, and you've Truly been busy. blessed. Truly blessed. You're a Marine Corps veteran. You have a, your business in business now, right? Business yep. owner. Um, well, you know my big question. Uh, you're out in Denver. How do you run for a spot in? Montgomery County. How's that work? Federally, well, it's Berks in Montgomery County. I live two miles outside of Berks County. But uh, federally, you don't need to live in the same district uh, when you go for a federal race. Um, you you don't need to be in the same in state? Nope. No. And I don't know what the percentage is, but it's a, probably a lot higher than you would think where um a lot of these folks have when they've been in dc for a while they wind up just buying a house down in dc they don't even live in their district anymore or their state so there are actually currently congressmen and women in pennsylvania that don't live in their district either so or didn't when they originally got voted maybe the district lines shifted and but I, there is a pretty significant percentage, more than people would know, of folks that are down in D.C. right now that don't even live in the same state anymore. I mean, if you look at it, like Hillary Clinton became a senator in New York. She didn't live there either. That was back in the 90s. She had never lived in New York. She just wanted the prestige of it. So, um, all right. So my legal, answer legal, legally, there's no question about this because that would have flushed legally, itself out already. Absolutely. Um, legally, and, there's no question. So. And from a practical matter, this has been done before, but I live in Montgomery County um, and you don't, and I would be voting for you. Right. So, um, and so would other people that I know and respect, and I'm going to talk to them about this conversation, right? Um, so what are you saying that from a practical perspective, it really makes no difference the way that, that it works out schedule-wise anyway? From a schedule-wise uh, location wise, I'm actually perfectly placed because I can be anywhere in the district within an hour, anywhere. The furthest part of my district is an hour from, you know, from me and have offices across the district. That's not a problem. So logistically, it's not a problem. Morally or uh, how people feel about me. Here's what I would say. I have been, I worked in Berks County and Montgomery County oversaw with my previous employer. I oversaw uh, a couple offices in Montgomery County as well as in Berks County. So I have dealt with businesses across this district for many, many years. Um, I currently have customers from across these districts. So I am just being called to serve again. I, when you, when you call the police, you don't care where they live as long as they show up at your door and help you. Right. When, a, when you thank a service member for their service because they serve their country, you don't care where they lived. You just, when I went, it didn't matter what state I was from when I was in Paris Island, you know, sitting in a swamp pit in Paris Island. I didn't care where the guy next to me was, was as long as we well, were here's why it, Here's why it does matter, though, Dan. And the reason it matters to me. All right. And I'll tell you why. Um, I'm not too happy about Dr. Oz coming down to Pennsylvania. Uh, have you, have you've met Kathy Barnett? 
What do you yep. think of the situation? Now, here's my point on all that. Well, I guess to your point on the, you know, on the residency issue and whether it applies or not, um, you know, if, if there would have been a fair and open debate about in terms of, you know, Oz's credentials, just like you're doing right now, you're, you're saying, hey, look, I'm an hour away. So it's not like I'm a million miles away. I know this area. I've worked this whole area. And I, I agree with everything you're saying. I have no problem with any of that. And I want to talk about supporting you as a grassroots candidate, which is the important thing, not exactly where you're located within that. I'm fine with all that. Um, yeah, I'm 10 miles you... outside the district. I, I live literally 10 miles outside the district. So it's not with all the redistricting, and the line changes and everything else, it's just the Nothing. way it fell. Yeah. Now, now I'm 10 miles outside the district instead of being in. But I would, but, I don't view Dr. Oz as a grassroots candidate, which is what I'm getting at. Would you agree with that or no? From my experience with him, probably not. No. I mean, he holds, he holds polls because women like him. And I think I, I no, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't consider him that. I, I think. Are you a grassroots candidate? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. So yeah. We totally so agree. He's not, so, and yeah. that's the point. Yeah, you're not, you're not an outsider coming in. So I, I think that's good. Dan. No. Let me ask you this. So, um, all right. So we cleared the hurdle with all that. But you had to get uh, signatures, uh, right? Mm -hmm. to, to go. And how many signatures did you need? You need over 1,000. Over 1,000. And you, so you had to – now they have to come from the district, right? Yep. So you had so to come I, down to – Yeah, Montgomery County, Berks County. So how we did it, we got – we got somewhere around 1400 signatures and we did it in, in basically 10 days. And how we did it is I went out and met people. I had a grassroots folks from across Montgomery and, and Berks County out there helping me because they believe in the mission that we're, we're trying to accomplish here and serve. And they know where my heart is at. And I went out and I met business owners and I stood in front of diners and I stood in front of Ace Hardware and I, I walked around and I door knocked in developments and I just got to meet people. And it was probably, the best and hardest and longest days I've had in a long time, but it's hard work, working, isn't it? It's a 1400 lot. signatures is a lot. And you got to make sure that they're all valid and, you know, and they're all good and you do them right. And then you, when you say valid and good, that means registered voters, right? Registered, registered. voters. You got to make sure they, they live in the district. So if you're at, if you're standing in front of an ACE hardware, you got to say, Hey, do I'm Dan Burton. Where do you live? How are you registered? Are you a registered Republican? No. <laughs> okay. Have a great day. <laughs> you know, um, but it was, I just love, I love Americans, brother. I just love people. And I think I converted more Democrats to Republican through those conversations because they're like, you're Republican. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Well, then we have nothing in common. Well, wait a minute, ma'am. Do you love America? Yes, of course I do. Okay. Do you love your freedoms? Yes, of course I do. Do you like mandates and other things? No. Okay, then we have everything in common. That's all that matters. You love America. You love your freedom. Good for you, Dan. I'll right? tell you right and, now, man. Um, if you, it, We need leadership that can unite right now in a big way. I really believe that. Uh, absolutely. Are, are you nervous at all about what you have in front of you? I mean, you're going to, if, if, if things go well, uh, that means there's going to be some attacks coming. You've got some skeletons in your closet, I'm sure. I talk to people out there. I, I know what's yeah, going right. on. <laughs> I don't have no skeletons uh, here, brother. Are you nervous? No skeletons here. Are you nervous Not at all? At all. That's, you know, faith before fear, brother. But there is only one place that I would say that I don't, I'm not nervous, but this is where I focus most of my prayer, we'll say. Okay. I can charge into battle. I have no, I have no qualms with embracing the suck and smiling in the face of evil and just vanquishing it. I don't have to worry about evil behind me or to my sides because I'm charging straight at it. Right. The problem with this battle is my family's along with me. They're riding along in the Humvee with me. And it's, it's, I have no problems facing that evil because right now, as I said before, it is a, it is a war of good versus evil, but my family is along with me. And I, I just pray that I have armored them and, and, and trained them and got them ready for the battle that's coming ahead too. 
And I'll tell you that my three kids are, I am truly, truly blessed and I'm incredibly humbled and honored that the Lord has blessed me with such awesome children that he gave me faith to raise with such a mission to raise those kids. And then I'm also humbled and honored that he has called and tapped me to step into this battle. And I hope I've prepared my children enough for what, what we have, but that's the only fear I have because right now, if not me, then who, and if not now, then when, and I, continue to look and just say, not today, Satan, you are not getting my country while I still have a breath in my, in my lungs. Evil will not, will not succeed while on my watch. And so I say, I'm going to serve this country. That's what I mean. I'm not going there to be served like so many other politicians down there. They go, they make their tons of money, they get their retirements, they they hold their power and their fiefdoms and they do all this stuff and they get served and they walk around and hmm. it's not me, brother. If I get one, if I get one term and the Lord blesses me with one term and I get to speak some speak and seek the truth from the house floor and bring light to that darkness, then then it'll be job well done. But Great I will, I will, this will be won by, by patriots, by America first people, not establishment first. There's a big difference. And we see a lot of that going on out there. But some of the things I'm saying on this thing, you may, your podcaster may get uh, censored somehow or something because evil does not like the truth. <laughs> and they don't like, it doesn't like uh, hearing what, what real people are going to step up and do and they do try to attack and i just smile at it i appreciate I you smile. saying that it is amazing the games they play with the podcast and do and you know you know what dan the only saving grace for me is uh i don't do any advertising there's no money and so they can't shut it down um you know alex jones now is bankrupt they squeeze them out i, I want to talk to you a little bit more after we're done recording about the fight that you have ahead of you. Where are you from originally, Dan? I've lived in Pennsylvania since fourth grade. So I've lived in, uh, I think, five or six different counties throughout that time. So I guess that'd be... In southeastern Pennsylvania? Or? No, I've lived all over. I okay. actually have, I have land surrounding, I have a property uh, in Schuylkill County. I got, we live... Right here in northern Lancaster County. Where is Schuylkill County? Uh, <laughs> New, New, Ring, New Ringgold. Uh, I so, think it was. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have a far. house out there. <laughs> oh, nice. So yeah. it's a uh, small it's town. A haven. We love it. Yeah. It's great. And so that's 10 miles outside the district, too, right? So uh, I grew up, I went to high school in Northampton County. I lived okay. in Center County for a little bit of time. I lived in uh, um, Lycoming County. <laughs> so I've lived all over the state. Uh, but I've, I've lived in this southeastern portion for 20 years, over well, 20 years now. Let me just tell you this. Uh, the Democrat chokehold on this area outside of Philadelphia is tight, really mm -hmm. tight. Are you ready to lose? If that's what's uh, called to me. I've been told so many times that this district is not winnable by a true conservative. It's I'm tough, told man. that I need... What's that? It's tough. Very tough. I've been told I need to told that I need to dial back my faith. I've been told I need to dial back on my passion for my country. I've been told so many different things. Because that's not what this district wants. I am not called for such a time as this to do anything half-heartedly. It's going to be all heart. It's going to be all passion. It's going to be all faith. What you see is what you get. You may not like everything I say, or you may not be as strong of faith as me. I'm never going to force my faith upon you, but I will stand here with open arms and I will accept you and I will answer any questions you have. But I stand for righteousness, truth, liberty, life, and the pursuit of happiness. 
That's it. And the more someone tells me that I can't be good, because that's how I look at it, right? You can't, Dan, stop, stop with the faith thing. You're going to turn people off. Really? You're telling me right now, I don't think this is a Democrat Republican thing. This is a war of good versus evil. This is a light war of life versus death. Okay. Are you for good or are you for evil? Are you for life or are you for death? There is no gray area in between anymore. And so when I'm out there and I'm knocking on doors and we've done, I don't know how many doors we've not done. I have teams out there knocking on doors. I've been out knocking on doors. I'm at a meeting every single night, except for tonight. Um, the people that I am talking to are tired of shenanigans. They're tired of half truths. They're tired of voting somebody to go in to represent them. And then they change when they get to DC. What you see is what you get. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what I'm about, and what I want to represent. And I want to hear what you're about so I can represent you too. But to tell you something I'm not is, is a recipe for me changing who I am when I get, that's not how that, that's how that works. Right. And so you could look at some of the candidates right now, and you brought one up earlier in the podcast. You could say that they're telling you exactly what the what you want to hear. You know, oh, but the soccer moms love them. I mean them. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to get the vote. That's because you're you're being told exactly what the polls tell you you want to hear. I think what you're trying to say is something that I try and convey so frequently. I use the example of social media, like this Twitter story, people going back to Twitter. I say to myself, why would you go back to that garbage? You know that they're spying on you. You know that they're censoring you. Uh, and I would say, even if you want to believe that Elon Musk is going to somehow change that, wouldn't you at least want to see evidence of that before you jump back <laughs> into the thing? I don't understand how people double down on that stuff. And I would encourage you uh, to be bold and to be strong and to be painfully honest. And I think people want to hear it more than you know. Let me turn That's the question. That's what I was going to say. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. When I'm out there and I talk to, and I'm talking to anybody, because I love just talking to people. When I tell them the truth and they look at me and go, it's nice to finally hear somebody tell the truth, even though it's hard to hear sometimes. I'm going to vote for you in November because I can't vote for you in the primary because I'm a Democrat. You know what? This is, a, this is American, right? This is an American vote in time period right now. This isn't a Democrat-Republican time period. This is good versus evil. This is an American. We want to stand up for our freedoms. Our, the, our own pursuit of happiness. We don't want mandates. We want, to, we want the freedom to live our own lives, period. And that is all walks of life. That is every single American. And if you have somebody that's willing to speak the truth, to seek the truth, and actually give you your own information so that you can stand tall and work for your own benefit with the truth, then that's the person you want to vote for and support, regardless of party, regardless of where they live, regardless of anything. Indeed. And that's few and far between, right? So Indeed. I just know that that's what I'm standing for, brother. That's it. Let me switch gears on you a second. Please. If I were to go back and talk to the guys that were in your unit, what would they have to say about the day? How long, how, when did you get out? Oh, my goodness. I didn't even know. They'd be like, who? <laughs> it's been It's been 21 years or so. <laughs> 21 years oh your your, your uh camis are barely uh faded out there huh? oh my goodness no yeah because they're sitting in the sea bag in the basement still <laughs> <laughs> oh man. so yeah but if if uh i was in the national guard after the marine corps too um i got out as an e4 but um i was a bradley gunner at that time mm. if you talk to any of the men that I was around, they'd tell you that I was the uh, the guy that kept us rolling. They'd tell you that I was the guy that was the one that stepped up and was the first one. If I was in a situation, I'd be the one that would say, let's go boys, instead of go do it, boys. I'm the one that's, you know, learned the hard way that when you're sitting in Fort Bragg in a 
doggone hole and it's raining for some reason it was always freakishly cold while i was there 40 some <laughs> degrees raining two o'clock at night and you're looking at the dude next to you and it's just terrible and you just smile and say hey i want to know <laughs> you know and you start but that's when you embrace the suck and the and the men around you would run through walls for you and with you. That's what they would say about me. Awesome. And, uh, you know, I was 435 congressmen and women. I figure if I can get 3% of them on my side that can take those fury arrows when we all start speaking the truth, we don't have to need the quad. If it's only 3% of us, it'd be 13. And I think 13 is a... I don't know what we're going to, we got to come up with a name, but it'll be the Magnificent 13 or something like that because. That's a great 13, strategy too, Dan. Is that, is that, uh, that sounds like something you, you, you're serious about. It's something that came to me through prayer one time and through just some, I'm like, you know what? We hear so much about the 3% that fought for this country through the Revolutionary War. What if we got 3% of our congressmen to just get together and join with us and speak truth on the House floor? If we and that'd be 13. Well, that's a great number. It's always been a lucky number for me. So now we got 13 folks that have dedicated themselves to speaking the truth and truly representing the people and serving this country instead of being served. And so when I'm out there talking to congressmen and women trying to, you know, they think I'm trying to figure out what I need to get elected and all this other stuff. They don't know I'm actually interviewing them to see who's going to stand with me when I'm on that floor. Sure. And my kickers and my, my boots standing on the house floor speaking the truth. I've been told, Dan, you're not going to make a lot of friends doing that. I'm not there to make friends. We can sing Kumbaya when evil is vanquished. When our country is saved and we have, we've saved freedom for the next many generations because we stood up right now and ended this stuff. Then we can then we can sit around and we can put our boots up and we can have then we can be all nicey nicey, but right now we need to we need to pick a side, as you said before, it, you got to pick a side, you got to decide. Silence in the face of evil is is evil, and I'm not calling people who are silent evil, but at some point, you're either on the side of evil or you have to speak up against it. I'll call them evil. I do it all the time, and Thomas Paine did do in Common Sense, and it's. It's the, 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 the people, the mediocrity that makes me sick. It really does. Uh, they're neither here nor there. And they're the ones that really uh, allow this, this evil to prevail, right? The, the yeah, so I, I didn't want to label, I didn't want to lump everybody in that uh, is scared because there's a lot of fear, right? So you're scared. I'm not saying that you're evil because you're scared and you're being silent. But those who are purposely silent, inaction is action. That is evil. You are siding with evil. If you see something happening and you do nothing about it, you are just as bad as the perpetrator if you do nothing about it. If you're scared to death, I will be a light that you can follow and you can follow that light and get out of the darkness and you'll have to be, you know, you'll have to find your own way. But right now, you know, the only way for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing, right? Indeed. Indeed. But, but the only way, how long can you be considered good if you still do nothing, there's a little added on end for you. A friend of mine told me. Yeah. So I don't mean to thank you for your, I don't mean to take up your time and questions. Sorry. <laughs> That's good stuff, Dan. I appreciate yeah, it. You know, I get passionate, brother. <laughs> you and me both. You and me both. Uh, and I'm not going to apologize for that. I get, I just get, I'm just getting started, brother. It's like, you want me to only talk for three minutes? I'm just getting warmed up at three minutes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, know what I mean? Too. We're just getting started. Let me, uh, so you decide to run, uh, you had to raise money too, right? You had to raise money? Yeah. So let me let you in on a little something here. Yeah, I raised money. I, I actually put in a little bit of my own money. And we're not talking about millions. I'm not a wealthy, I'm not a uh, earthly wealthy person. Um, so I put a bunch of money in myself. Money I didn't, I really should have held on to, but this is important. So I did that. Raising money, 
again, my campaign manager keeps providing and keeps opening the doors. I am going to surprise a lot of people when we win this race because I'm tired of the establishment coming to me and saying, hey, how much money have you raised? Ooh, yeah, maybe next time. So they measure the viability of a candidate by how much money they can raise. Ultimately, so you can figure out how much money they're going to raise the party because that's all they really care about. So, no, I, I'm not out there. I'm, I'm calling people. I'm having meetings and people are, are willingly giving me money towards this race. And I'm getting the money that I need in order to get my name out there, to buy the signs we have, to get letters and, and uh, website and all that other stuff. But that we're not spending I'm not spending $12,000 a month for a consultant. I'm not spending multi-millions of dollars a month like some of these senatorial candidates that are spending dropping $10 million a month on what I'm not sure. Mostly, mostly smear ads on their opponents. So now we not only we're spending millions of dollars in the Republican Party against our, our against our, our brethren. Own candidates. Thank right? you. Right? I, that we does not Shapiro, promote grassroots candidates. Right. We got Shapiro's got like 50 mil sitting around, wait, ready to just dump on the primary candidate. They're just letting the, us eat, a, eat our own. And then you have committees, GOP committees across the state that are absolutely corrupt, trying to establishment committees who are just date, basically abusing the system, not following their own bylaws. And they're not they're only looking for people that they like, who they can control, as opposed to the person that's truly trying to stand up and serve their country again. That's it. Why, did you consider so, running it as an independent? Would I consider that? Did, did you consider it? Um, I haven't yet because I'm... Uh, let's face it, independents don't win. I'm a conservative Republican, so I have that Republican title because, you know, we are unfortunately a two-party system right now. If we want to make a difference, registering myself as an independent Unfortunately, it kind of takes my voice away right now. Now we can look back in history and we'll see the difference between the Whigs and the Republican Party, right? That's basically Lincoln coming in and changing that scenario, right? So, no, I did not consider it in the beginning because I've always been registered Republican. Um, depending on where the primary goes, I can't answer that question. I don't know. We can't afford to have Madeline Dean win again. And so if a strong candidate like me goes independent, we're going to fight for the Republican independent vote and Madeline Dean wins again. And so everybody says that. But if, well, if just, your campaign manager is really running the campaign, what does he say? I'm asking you this as much as self-reflection as anything, Dan. Uh, I'll I know. Just, and, you know, I thought about that, brother, and David, David stepped up on the 40th day of coming out of the fields and he heard Goliath. Goliath was doing this for 40 days. David just heard it for the first time. Goliath's walking around going, I'm going to kill all of you today. You're all going to die and your God means nothing. And David said, what that guy just say? David's carrying like cheese and he's carrying like goat cheese or something to deliver to his brothers or something because they're all there. And he's like, what'd that guy just say? That guy's got to go. That guy's, somebody's got to put that guy down. Wait, nobody's going to put that guy down. You're all scared to death. Oh, not today, Satan. All right, I guess I'm up. Lord, watch over me. I'm going to battle. Your will be done. I either vanquish him like I vanquished the lion or the bear, or I'm going to get schwacked today but it'll at least be in your name and I'll set the example for everybody else to say they're not going to be speaking about my Lord that way. Picks up a stone, schwacks that dude, goes up to him and cuts his own head off with his own, cuts his head off with his own sword and holds it up and shows the Philistines, this is what my God is capable of. Mic drop, right? So you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, if my uh, if my campaign manager calls me to step onto that battlefield, I will do it with honor and grace, mm -hmm. humility, and I will do it. And we'll have to see where we're at. But as you and I have heard General Flynn speak a few times, 
we got to get there first. Right. And, uh, I do, before we get off this, I do want to cover that house bill you were talking about, because that is one of the scariest things I've seen in a long time, other than DHS relabeling a dem domestic terrorist before, too. Is, as anybody that disagrees with the, the edicts of the government or the of what the government is yeah, saying. Yeah, so let me tee that up here, and let's get us to that point, all right? So you're a regular guy out in you know, not, I wouldn't say central Pennsylvania, but for the purpose of this audience, central PA, right? Out, out there on the, on the edge of suburbia, let's say. And you got a couple of kids and you're in business and you don't like what's going on. You're like a lot of us and you're getting very upset and you have a voice, you vote, you pay taxes and you have every right to be heard. And you're the kind of guy that's going to grab the bull by the horns and, and get involved and help as you have when you're in the Marine Corps, as you were in the National Guard. And now you've you've committed your own money with that could be better spent on your your children's college education, but you felt the need to, to step up personally and make that investment. You're busting your butt. We didn't even barely cover it, but I have a little bit of an idea how much time you're spending, uh, and it's a lot of time away from your family that you're investing in all this. And now here we are, and then you come to find out some news today that you were telling me about. And I shared some news with you, and I want to go with your news first, and then we'll talk about my news. None of them were on any national media or any secondary media. Not, and I don't mean to be throwing people out, but I'm. You, we talk about the establishment Republicans and the problem we have, and I hear celebrating today how Mark Levin's going back on Twitter, and I say, yep, there's another one that's fallen to the left. Mark Levin has become worthless to me at this point. Isn't that a shame? Isn't that a real shame? Where's Dan Bongino? This is important news. I'm on Bongino Report. That's the same Gabby crap that's on all the other mainstream garbage that's out there. Who is fighting the fight? You come to find out from your face-to-face -face meeting, because other than God, nature, and face-to-face -face meetings, nothing else is real anymore. Nothing else is authentic. You don't know if you're talking to a person or a bot. You're talking to real people. And you come to find out that despite a court opinion that it was unconstitutional, that in Montgomery County, they're going to drop, drop boxes on the ground, unsupervised, totally against the Pennsylvania Constitution. Before you jump in on this, I mentioned that I was having lunch yesterday with a business owner friend. That business owner has provided financial support for a Republican group here that launched an incredible campaign. We're in your district, Dan. I want you to listen to this story and share it with your campaign manager, all right? And it might be the, all the difference in the world, and I mean that. This group, they ran the best campaign ever. My wife said the Democrats are going to get smeared. They have no platform. They're not even responding in anything, nothing. The vote comes in, and guess who won? The Republicans. They're unbelievable. Everywhere you went, you saw their signs, real support on the ground. And they won. But then the day after, some ballots came in. And then a couple more. And a couple more. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you damn know it, Dan? Landslide victory for the Democrats. And they say that all those ballots came from the nursing homes here in town that they collected up. And they came in late after the fact. I talked to them and they won't even run again. They said, until the election system is fixed, there's just no point in even bothering with it. That's kind of, that story has led me into what I talk about, you know, getting away from the Republican party, but let's stick with your story a second and what it means to you. So now here we are and you got to go fight the fight. You're ready to take the fight, but you're not taking any fight, Dan, if you don't get into office. All right. Right. And I can applaud you and, and everybody can applaud you and, but if, if there's not a fair election system, what do you do? Tell, first of all, tell me, tell me the story, what, what Montgomery County is doing. So last night, uh, or the night before, with a Patriot group, they found out that the Department of uh, Elections for, for Montgomery County, the Board of Elections, was going to put 11 drop boxes around Montgomery County. So this obviously upset some folks. So we, or I'll say they, 
because they're they jumped right on it. They called the Department of the, the Board of Elections for the state and said, "Hey, how what's the precedent here? What what are we doing here? What what are the laws with drop boxes? Yada yada yada." What did the state do? Oh, that's up to the county. So that's on the counties. That's up to the county. Okay. So we call it the Board of Elections in the county. Uh, we have a meeting on Wednesday at 1130 in the middle of the day. Okay. So today, uh, there was a Board of Elections meeting in Montgomery County at 1130. Now, last night, we had a little bit of a powwow trying to figure out what, what can we do about this? We can try to get an injunction. We can try to say, hey, this is unconstitutional. Some of the lawyers you've seen around here, they want at least 50 grand to just file an injunction, something, something like this. It's unbelievable, okay? You're, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. So I got on the phone today with the election board, and I, I thought, it's got to be simpler than this. Just look at the Constitution. This can't be constitutional. And what the Montgomery County is doing, they don't have any precedent. They don't have any laws. They don't have any accountability for this thing. They don't have any chain of command or, uh, or anything. They're putting drop boxes out on April 30th. They will be sitting there 24 hours a day, open for your pleasure, until May 17th. So we have... 18 days, 24 hours a day of drop boxes sitting around Montgomery County. 11 of them. Berks County has four. They're, they're, they're proud. And they're they not going to verify the signatures. So I, you can I don't know drop what they're gonna paper do. in a box on a ground. How's that an election? It's not. So this is what I did. I called them because they give you so much time for your freedom of speech. They give you two minutes to get a point across that they're just going to ignore. You can't ask questions. They have their solicitor and a judge sitting there. And what did I do? I got on there and I said, we just pledge allegiance in the beginning of this meeting and you all swore an oath to this constitution to defend it and uphold it. Here is my situation. U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 2, the election. And I read that. Pennsylvania Constitution, Article 7, Section 4. I read that to them. In a nutshell, you can go look at it. Your listeners can Google that pretty quick. But in a nutshell, it says the election will be one day, and it will be across the board one day. So I said to them, I said, we called the department, we called the Board of Elections at the state. They turn it back on you. It's up to you. That means they're wiping their hands clean of responsibility. So when it comes out that everything that you're doing is unconstitutional, the state's going to turn their back on you. And right now you are breaking every law and you're breaking your oath to the Constitution by allowing a drop box unmonitored with no regulations, with no accountability out there for 17 or 18 days. When we know that there is proven on video in Montgomery County in the 2020 election, people shoving piles of ballots in to drop boxes just like that one. We know it is unconstitutional and illegal, and you will be held accountable. I suggest, Mr. Solicitor and Mr. Judge, that you go back, you read the Constitution, understand where you stand. That is that is the rule of the land. Not you settled us to them? Yeah, in my two minutes. Did they laugh at you? No. I, I finished who, up. Who? I saw the little timer. They said, Mr. Burton, Mr. Burton, your time is up. Mr. Burton, your time is who's, up. Who's the solicitor? Do you know? Uh, I don't have it off the top of my head. I'd have to, I'd have to look it up. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I don't have it. I apologize. I don't have that with me right now. Um, so, but here's, so the problem now is that you're trying to run, you know, look, as far as right. anybody, anybody grassroots that actually represents the people of this country, let's just take a look at what's going on. Broadly speaking, uh, on the Democrat side, um, you're never going to get a chance at a, a fair vote in this district. We already know that. Uh, and in other news, Kathy Barnett, the established Republican, is, is getting squeezed out by her own party, as, as you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so you're going to move forward with this, knowing that these boxes are going to be out there. Um, Listen, I can live with trying and failing i can't live with thinking about it and not doing anything i can't live with the what ifs 
I'm going to do everything I possibly can. I'm going to work my hardest. I'm going to serve the American people. I'm going to fight this. Whether I'm whether I win this primary or not, I'm still going after election integrity. I'm still think I still want to fight for my constitutional right. because right now, listen, I'm tired of hearing this. Well, you're disenfranchising voters by requiring ID. No, 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 no. That's a great narrative that the left likes to throw up. Literally vomit out of their mouth. Dan, we need to restore to... integrity to our elections Absolutely. as the primary thing that we need to do. If you if, if, if you don't have re- elections, here, here's the question that I ask very simply on this. When, when people push back on that, I say, do you think that elections should be decided in court? Why is it every election has got to go to court? That's not an election system. That's an election scam that's been going on for years. Decades. Ending up some judge in Florida. Oh, well, the presidential election. What? One per? That's not how the system's supposed to work at all. So I walk into Costco. I need ID at Costco, right? Just to get into the shopping club to go into Costco or Sam's or whatever, right? So if I don't show an ID to go choose your and my future through voting, because that's what we're doing. We're choosing our path and our future and what we want. If I don't need to show ID, if somebody comes in and votes illegally or stuffs a ballot box or does whatever, that's true disenfranchisement. You're taking away my vote and my right to vote and my right to choose my own future. That's what voting is. It's the most important act of freedom of speech that you have is to vote for the path you want to take your country and ultimately your own personal life. Simple question, Dan. That's it. At a very young age, we took an oath, right? Many have gone to foreign places, fought and died. And that is the main issue, is the right to vote in a free and fair election. And we don't have it here. Exactly. And if it doesn't get fixed in this election, let me tee up. It's lost forever. It's going to be lost forever. Um, so the two pieces of news, piece number you're one, getting me angry. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, I get called angry all <laughs> the time. I've been angry a long time. I've been angry a long time. It's just kidding. I, I don't even, <laughs> and you know what I just tell people anymore? I tell people, I was talking to, uh, these lovely, lovely women from, uh, 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 this, uh, audit the vote PA. You met them there at the oh, yeah. event. Um, and I started talking and I said, I, I said, look, I, I can't talk about it. I get angry. She's like, it's okay. <laughs> she can put up with it. Um, I, I don't know how you don't get angry. I really don't. I don't see the guy. You see what's going on. Like, oh, oh, it's okay. What do you mean? What's okay? We just need to move on. My candidate, my, my opponent, we just need to move on from the 2020 election. Are you right. kidding me right now? Are you right. kidding so let's, me? Right let's, move, let's do it. Let's move on. Let's move right into this election where we are now. And explain to me how unsupervised boxes on the ground with no verified signatures, let alone ID. Ben, you're talking about requiring ID. We're about a million miles from that right now. You don't even know if those things were delivered by a person at this point. They could have been flown in there by a drone and you wouldn't know. Exactly. Exactly. And if so, they're going to steal the election again. You can see it with what's happening with COVID. Suddenly, mask mandates sprinkled in here and there, right? Um, and, and this drop box nonsense. Oh, and we're supposed to believe that Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, is the only place in the country that this crap's going on. No, no corruption Everywhere. in Chicago, I'm sure, right? Everything's on the up and up Everywhere. in Chicago. How about Houston? Everything's AJ squared away. So then I find this. H.R. 350, Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act of 2022. And I have said consistently, when you start hearing national security laws, you better run. This law is designed in the text, investigating acts of terrorism and white supremacist and neo-Nazi. No mention of Black Lives Matter, Antifa. This is a a weaponizing, a further weaponizing. It's like taking the Patriot Act and taking the next step, which becomes the federal enforcement arm of this. Chris, do do me a favor. Read right after it says neo-Nazi and 
What does it say? It, where? Infiltration of law enforcement and corrections agencies. Oh, wow. So now we just went from defund the police to calling them domestic terrorists because they're infiltrated by white supremacists. Oh, yeah. And so are all of our corrections officers and everybody else has anything to do with protecting and serving our nation. That sounds like the civil patrol that Obama was trying to put in place anybody remembers that what was it the civil police force or i can't it was just a the conspiracy exact... theory you wacko oh it's just conspiracy oh here theory. it is awesome. every oh, time yeah. every conspiracy theory it's coming true it's coming true very quickly i can't believe we're seeing this i don't know what the possibilities of this getting passed dan this is why we need to get you elected my friend we need Brother. to get the election fixed up um we need here's to the, make sure here's the that problem we're... too as your listeners, and you know this too, there aren't a lot of republic. There aren't a lot of Republicans that don't tout that they're pro-life or pro-Second Amendment or whatever. Okay, whatever you would see, consider Republican side of of policy to a Democrat side of a policy. Okay, but I'll just use pro-life for an example. Okay, we killed a million babies in this country last year through abortion. Okay. And we have all these Republicans out there saying, I'm pro-life. We closed 35,000 in Pennsylvania, and that's a rough estimate, okay? Again, another, let's pat our back on that one. We only killed 35,000 last year, guys, right? We, we hold the Republican, we hold the House and the Senate. I say we as Republicans in this state. We're all touting that we're, we're pro-life. Who stepped up and put a bill forward? Who stepped up and did anything? Who's stepping up right now in our U.S. House coming against this House bill? Oh, Dan, we're the minority. We can't do anything. You know, give me you a even hear about it. Sorry. You got one of these? You got a mouth? Right. Do you, ha do you have some? Can you stand up and say something about it? Can you speak the truth to the American people so the American people know what the Democrats or the far left is actually doing? No, because you have you own the media. They're not reporting any of this. Do you think that, you, just like you said, is this anywhere out in mainstream media that they just labeled how many people, whatever they want, you, you basically can convert that to, into any person. You could walk up to any person and say, you're now a terrorist. We saw one of your social media posts and you don't agree with Black Lives Matter. So now you're a white supremacist. They just converted just by changing their definitions and ch making these little house bills that don't mean anything. I mean, that's like the shortest bill I've ever seen. Usually they're 10,000 pages of garbage. I think it's four right? pages total. I told Have you seen any Republicans stand up? I think the only person, we don't see anybody standing up. So that's my point. You can see it. But you, you know what, Dan? Of... Right wingers are all the same with your scare tactics. You know, that's the problem. This is clearly a law to deal with domestic terrorism. And if, if you're not guilty of anything, what do you have to worry about? Well, of course. I told this story. You're not, are you a white supremacist, Dan? No. Are you a Nazi? No. Well, you might be according to this, all right? I and I told this little story. A little white girl is in class in Bucks County, second grade. What's that, eight, nine years old? She says to the little black boy in class with her, listen to this little white racist, the egregiousness. This is the racism going on, why we need laws like this, Dan. I can't believe you don't support it. She, you know what she said? She said, I like good black people, but I don't like bad black people. They ushered in you know, therapy and a new program and they had to talk to the teacher and they brought all the parents in and it made the national news. That was her comment. That's what we're calling white nationalism, white supremacy. If I said to you, Dan, you're white. Did I get that right? You look white to me. Are you white, Dan? Mostly. More or less. You know, Dan, I like good white people, but I don't like bad white people. Does that offend you in any way? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so you're clearly exhibiting a, your white privilege. Clearly. My oppressiveness. I uh, what's it gonna take for people to wake up, Dan? I've been saying it from the beginning. 
We need to seek and speak the truth. And a government right now, I will say a regime right now, is doing everything in its power to divide us against each other. We are trying to teach kids racism to be anti-racist. Have you ever seen, kids don't know skin color or differences. They just know people. This was, this is Martin Luther King saying, you know, and put it in a kid's heart. They only know who, who's good to them and who's bad to them, who, who treats them nice and who can they have fun with on the playground. But now we have them in school. In, I believe it was a couple weeks ago, just in either, uh, I think it was in Montgomery County or Chester County. We had a school district where the teacher had them go, who's the oppressed? Who's, whose mom and dad gave them a cell phone? Who owns a cell phone? This is like second or third grade. And they raise their hands and then they walk, they take a step forward, take a step forward so they could see who's the oppressed and the oppressors. And this happens in a classroom in a second or third grade class. Are you kidding me? Because guilt What's it and shame to wake are the tools up? of the left. What's it going to take to wake people up? Hmm. See what they're teaching your kids because the kids are how they're getting to you. Where does evil go first? The most softest target, and they're coming after our children. You can teach children and ruin an entire generation. Look at them. We got kids in high school right now. We have more social, we have more mental disabilities right now because we basically put kids through solitary confinement for the last two years and then indoctrinated them with whatever we wanted to feed down their brain. And we couldn't even let them think for themselves. They couldn't see 80% of their communication through a mask. What have we done to our children? Enough is enough, America. Wake up. This is not freedom. This is not. What is it going to take to wake people up? They're going to have, they're going to, have to see the evil, and it, it's coming. And they're going to be looking at all these conspiracy theorists who have been saying this is a war of good versus evil and just say, dude, you're, you're just one of those other religious fanatics. No. My definition of evil is anything that takes your freedom away your ability to choose your own path, your ability to make your own decisions in life, to work hard if you want to, to sit on your butt if you want to and make nothing of yourself, that's still a choice and it's still a freedom. But right now to tell everybody that they're perfectly equal, they should be making the exact same money, they should be getting the same amount of food, they should be getting the same amount of money, we should be dispersing all the wealth and we're gonna take everybody and dump more people into our country so that we are more beholden to the government, we're guaranteeing happiness so that you are more under our control. I'll give you this. Satan, what did he do as a serpent in the tree? He guaranteed happiness. I'm going to give you knowledge. This apple's going to be beautiful. I know, I know. God told you you're going to have to work hard and I'll give you the perfect life. But guess what? Eat this apple. I guarantee it's happiness. That is exactly what the enemy and evil is doing right now. Evil is doing that right now. The most racist thing I've been seeing right now is from the left. Free, free drug centers in Harlem. Giuliani, when he was Republican uh, mayor of New York, America's mayor, cleaned up, cleaned up the prostitution, cleaned up the, the whorehouses and the strip clubs and everything and made city an actual uh, New York City a place I could go visit. Right. Harlem stepped up. You know, it didn't be it was something so bad in the 80s. It, it, and it, it came out of it came out of nowhere. Now we're putting drug safety centers in. Oh, and yeah, that $30 million, that's from a grant. That's not government money. Wait a minute, what? That's not tax money. For free crack pipes. That is the most racist thing I've ever seen. You want to just screw the lid down on somebody from being able to, you want to oppress somebody? Take away their freedom and their liberty and their pursuit of their own happiness and continue to guarantee it until you absolutely control them and they have no will or ambition they have no self-worth because all they do is get something for somebody and then they are truly oppressed and who's doing the oppressing the same people that are saying that they're trying to keep you from being oppressed that's mm -hmm. the ultimate racist oh my gosh i get oh it fires me up i can't I'll tell you it. what amazes me dan if i said to you you know i think it would be better if everybody had a minimum basic income guaranteed basic income what would be the first question you would ask about that? Mine would be, how much is it going to be? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Because what they're on, they're going to say, look, the government's going to take care of you. Government's going to give you a basic income. Government's going to give you health care. 
and you you, you don't have to work if you don't want to, right? This is your option. <laughs> but what they're offering is a thousand dollars a month, you know, and the healthcare that comes with it. You know, I think people ought to go take a go, you know, some of these clinics and so forth. The people are trying to get get off of these systems like nobody's business, and they're selling it like it's something to be coveted. And so my point is. You know, people, what they're selling is so self-destructive. I'll tell you the best example I can give. I watch this a lot more than I should because it's so close to my house. Kensington, Philadelphia, largest mm -hmm. open-air drug market in the world, reportedly. And you watch these people walking around, bent over like zombies. And I, and I think so that's, that's what they're selling. And they'll give you a thousand a month <laughs> that, you know, they can somehow make money off of you, whether it's from your... Uh, you know, what they're gaining in the tax revenue or what they're gaining in, in grants or whatever the case might be. Um, right. But it's, it's not a, it's not a good deal. Not a good deal at all. Yeah, and go I'm gonna, you're going to lose video for me with just a second, but um, I just want to read something to you. And I, and I know, you know where it's from, but I want your, I want your audience to truly hear this. And because it's, it's really important. And, uh, you ready? Yep. Abolition of land ownership. Heavy taxes to the point of crippling individual wealth. Abolition of the right of inheritance. Confiscating the property of all emigrants and rebels. That means citizens and people that destroying those who disagree with you, basically. Nationalized banks. Centralization of all communication and transportation to the state. State owning all means of production for industry and agriculture establishment of worker armies, gradual abolition of the distinction of cities and towns, so forced resettlement, and free education. You know what that is? That's uh, UN 2030. <laughs> that is the Communist Manifesto. <laughs> that is the 10 facets of the Communist Manifesto. That same thing that we swore an oath to this Constitution of the United States to defend against, if I lit, that's 10 facets, I could go through every single one of those and tell you exactly what is happening. Resettlement, doxing people because they disagree with them. Free education. We've got the Department of Education. We've been doctrinating our kids since 1970. You can go through that entire list that I just read. Getting rid of inheritance, getting rid of all of it. Brother, that is what we're up against. That is the evil we're talking about. Damn. There's absolutely, yeah. We need to get you elected. <laughs> Brother, I know. And if it's not this election, there's something else bigger coming for us, brother, for the warriors. We're being called for such a time as this, for such a time as this. And I tell you all of your listeners right now, they have that little voice. And if they've made it through all my bantering and my rambling on here, one thing I want them to know is that they are being called for such a time as this, and there is nobody coming to save them. If they Very think true. that there's white hats, these white hats that we keep hearing about, that is a psyop, in my opinion. Okay? When Russia was a Soviet, when Russia was converting to communism, they told the people the same thing. Don't worry. We got white generals going to save the country. I think they called them white generals. Hmm. they're going to save our country communism's not going to take over sit back just wait trust us white generals are in control right sit back and wait millions of people dead later because communism that's what it does white generals never showed up right white hats in this country you want to save this country the only person that's going to save this country is the person that's listening to this podcast right now. The one that's Absolutely. driving down the road, listening right now, that little voice inside of you, you're going to be, you're good at something better than the person that's in the car next to you or out in that traffic. You need to figure out what your calling is and you need to step up and say, if not me, then who? And if not now, then when? I am good at this. And this is how I am going to every day now fight against the evil that is coming after my kids, my family, my liberties, my freedoms. I don't care that I've been de registered Democrat forever. This is not what I signed up for. I signed up for, I was born into greatness. This country was great. It's the greatest experiment ever. 
I need to stand up and do this right now. Just like David did and said, not today, Satan. It is time for everyone that is listening to this and everyone that I talk to, that is my resounding message. You need to stand up and ask yourself, if not me, then who? And if not now, then when? And when you feel beat down and evil will attack you, when you stand up, you need to stand tall, put on the armor of God, the full armor of God, smile into it and charge into it because that's the only way we defeat it. Speak, seek the truth, be the light in the darkness and be the warrior you were created to be.